Good afternoon, everybody. This is a live emergency briefing as the 18Z HRRR has come in with an absolutely shocking result showing over a foot of snow in the Oklahoma City metro with major wraparound, a slightly further south track of that surface low. And I'm here to break it all down for you. It is the only model that's showing this type of uh, an output. So definitely take this with a bit of a grain of salt. But when that model comes out, it's impossible not to go live with this. This is on Thursday morning at about 2Z, Thursday 3Z. See that surface low starting to take shape in the southern Texas panhandle. And then it starts to hit that moisture with moisture pumping northward from the Gulf of Mexico. Look at that moisture wading out ahead of it. But the more important result with this 18Z run is this further south track of that surface low where it develops. Arctic front might even be a little bit stronger, but this is the result of runaway dynamical cooling. So you get all of this precipitation that develops across central Oklahoma at the same time. There's also a cold pocket of air loft that's coming in. There you can see some of this cold air coming in at 700 just above the surface. So once that precipitation begins to fall and then gets really heavy, it's possible to pull that down pull that cold air down from just above the surface and then bring the whole entire column below freezing. And that's what happens out here first across western Oklahoma. The changeover happens during the morning hours on Thursday. It's still possible you could have supercells down here, south central Oklahoma to north central Texas. There's the surface low just to the west of DFW. Rapid changeover to ice and then changeover to snow across northwestern Oklahoma. And that's starting to knock on the door of the Oklahoma City Metro by 8, 9 in the morning, at least according to this HRRR run. This is what we're focusing on right now, of course. We will compare it uh, to the other models as well. But this really heavy precipitation just to the north of that surface low changes it over to very heavy snow. Very heavy convective snows as well. Wrap around here happening that swings through central Oklahoma during the late morning hours. And that's a pretty heavy snow event. Central Oklahoma up through Tulsa to the north of Tulsa, southeast Kansas, up through uh, western Missouri as well. The heaviest band of snow should pass just to the south of Kansas City. But this surface low now is tracking right over the Ozarks and then into southeastern Louisiana. The 18Z models are showing a bit of a messy convective evolution by midday on approach to the Mississippi River. Instability is not quite ramping up as is often happens with the short range models as you're leading up to these wintertime setups looks like a lot of cloud cover that's going to be in place even as we're starting to get peak heating happening but interestingly this 18z run shows a pretty big snow event in oklahoma city this would be the biggest in years if this model were to happen uh, but you do have to recognize that it is the only model showing this but look at that Double-digit snowfall north, especially just north of Oklahoma City, very close to the Oklahoma City Metro. Oklahoma City Metro with this model showing 13 inches of snow. And then look at the difference between the 18Z HRRR showing that band a little bit further north. This is the 18, sorry, the three-kilometer NAM, north central Oklahoma. Wichita gets in on the action. But boy, what a difference. And let's see where it takes that surface low track. It's possible that the three-kilometer NAM just isn't picking up on the magnitude of the dynamical cooling that's going to happen. Also, it seems to develop that surface low a little bit further north on the Texas Panhandle instead of down in the southern Texas Panhandle. Three kilometer NAM analyzes it a bit further north, but then reanalyzes the ejection. Yeah, the HRRR has a stronger surface low, develops it earlier in the process. And then it brings that surface low through North Texas, very close to the Red River, which would be a pretty favorable track. So that's the three kilometer NAM, a little bit further north than the HRRR. Does it really organize? It does seem like the three kilometer NAM is a lot more noisy with the placement of that surface low. And then the 18Z HRRR coming in a lot slower, more stout with that surface low. Three kilometer NAM just doesn't seem as accurate. Try to place that surface low where the convective feedbacks are located. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is an accurate depiction of what's going to happen. Seems a lot smoother with that surface low track. 
a little bit further south, developing it earlier over the southeast Texas panhandle. There's the upper system. Big jet streak coming around the base of the trough, passing over northern Mexico, which should pick up relatively dry air, and that elevated mixed layer should progress east over the moisture that would be in place over the mid-south. Now look at that system lifting off to the northeast, taking that track. Bulbous, a much more bulbous Vortmax here right at the base, just to the north of that jet streak, passing right along the Red River, which is a favorable track for the Oklahoma City Metro to get in on the snow. That's the HRRR. Let's see about the three kilometer NAM. Wow, what a discrepancy we're seeing. HRRR a lot further south of that upper level system. Three kilometer NAM much further north. So, this new HRRR that is coming in further south and deeper with that upper system. I wonder how this is going to impact severe weather downstream. And look at the shear out. It does look like it's a deeper system upon exiting the southeastern Great Plains. So in my opinion, this would lead to an increase in the severe weather potential downstream across the Mid-South. But really the limiting factor is going to be that instability and the cloud cover out ahead of this convective line. Looks relatively messy on approach to the Mississippi River at 18Z. But then there is the threat of those renegades developing across the open warm sector, central northern Mississippi on Thursday. But it's very possible that snow, the big snowstorm, could be the story with this one. Oklahoma City, up through Tulsa, up through southeastern Kansas, western Missouri as well. Pretty interesting setup. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this live emergency update. I saw that 18Z run, absolutely shocking 18Z run, showing that big-time potential for snowfall across central Oklahoma City, including Oklahoma City Metro. So I absolutely had to go live on that. It is a convective allowing model, though, at the same time. But it just seems like the, it's painting that snowstorm because of a southward trend in the upper-level storm system. A uh, stronger, more well-developed surface low that develops across the southern Texas panhandle. Takes a track just to the south of the Red River. Upper-level storm system lifting up right at the Red River which really is a perfect track for an upper-level storm system to get a big snowstorm into Oklahoma. And look at by 12Z, big northerly. The Arctic front's all the way down, crossing the Red River, knocking on the back door of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. So this is definitely going to cause what looks to be a snow event. Notice how it's 35 degrees, heavy precipitation in Oklahoma City, dynamical cooling trying to pull down that cold air from just above the surface. Looking at a sounding. And it's going to have to pull down that cold air from up here, up at about three kilometers heavy precipitation. Most of the precipitation, though, is generated in the mid levels of the atmosphere. So it's going to fall through this sub freezing layer. And it could be very effective at bringing that warm nose down. You can see that the uh, above freezing layer is very shallow and right at the surface. So the rain falling right through. Those cold temperatures just above the ground, and especially further up, could lead to a rapid cooling of the column. Look at that, 32 over 31. The whole column goes below freezing at about the same time. Let me slide this over to the right. And there you can see the sounding just as the heaviest snow starts to happen in the Oklahoma City Metro. There's your zero line right there, that blue line. So you can see just above the ground, well below freezing temperatures and a bit of a warm nose that noses slightly above freezing and then cools the whole column as your precipitation coming in in the mid-levels of the atmosphere falling through that deep cold pocket of air aloft. Let's take a spot sounding out of Kingfisher. 29 over 28 cools off very rapidly. Look at that deep Arctic air mass northerly through the whole layer. So really, I think that this HRRR model seems quite believable with that further south track, the upper level system moving right along the Red River. We have been trending toward a slower, deeper short wave, even deeper upon exiting the southeastern Great Plains of this setup. And it looks like that snow event begins morning hour and through the early afternoon 
and then it starts to wind down. So very heavy snowfall rates within that band. And as that surface low lifts off to the northeast, I was talking about this with Alex a little bit earlier. And the timing of the shear is going to be very important in the Mid-South for this system. And in my opinion, the best wind shear is going to be basically along the same longitudinal line as the surface low. And that surface low is rapidly ejecting. So by 20Z, the surface low is over southern Illinois. Looks like it's on the eastern edge of that. Somewhere over southern Illinois is where that surface low will be located. So then you take your longitude line all the way down into Mississippi. And that's where I think that the strongest wind shear is going to be. There's your surface low, southern Illinois. And you draw the longitudinal line all the way down. And anywhere along and east of that line where that surface low is rapidly ejecting is going to have the strongest wind shear. That's going to mean these eastern renegades. And it's possible the surface low is going to eject too fast and then leave the instability behind. And you're just going to get these sheared out storms, compressed critical angles. But I do think that the slower, deeper solution of the HRRR is probably going to resolve this. Nevertheless, I would want to be on one of these lead prefrontal confluence lines because that's where the strongest wind shear is located. And look at that surface low ejecting all the way up into southeastern Indiana. So if you draw the longitudinal line all the way down from the surface low, the strongest wind shear should be along that line. And it seems to leave the convection and the instability axis behind a little bit back into Mississippi where you get those upper 60s dew points they don't really eject off to the northeast or get pulled too far to the north so I definitely do have some question marks with this system but the HRRR appears to be too far north I mean the, the three kilometer NAM appears to be too far north and I do think that this higher amplitude trough ejection with the shift further south of the HRRR would lead to increased severe weather across Mississippi and portions of the mid-south So thank you everybody for tuning in to this live emergency update discussing the potential of a snow event that includes Oklahoma City Metro. I've seen a lot of the weather weenies that encompasses all facets of meteorologists from the most professional, the most self-proclaimed professional, all the way uh, to academics. Everybody's fired up. Got a phone call coming in in my earpiece here. Interesting. But anyway, this is that HRRR model. Three kilometer NAM looks to be too far north. And I do think that I buy this further south ejection of the trough. You're probably not going to see a foot in Oklahoma City, but at least could see a two to four inch type of a snowfall, maybe even a little bit more than that. Oklahoma City Metro up to the northeast through Tulsa. Never stop chasing.